planes. So I typically use uh, my work, my furniture making. I'll use a number four and a half. This is a Lee Nielsen four and a half. I tend to pick this up as my uh, user plane because it's adjusted and I'm, I'm familiar with it. Now, if you're going to uh, if you're going to invest in hand tools, try not to buy too many hand tools uh, immediately. Do it over time so you have a better understanding of uh, the, the correct tools you need for the type of work you do and you know, the familiarity also because if you um, if you have uh, fewer hand planes, don't look at what I have. I've just accumulated these over many, many years and I've restored several of them and that sort of thing. But if, you, if you're if you a beginning, you can maybe just invest in three or four hand planes and it'll be okay. And the advantage to that is you become very familiar with the, the few hand planes you have. And that's that's important in woodworking because uh, just picking up a hand plane that you're not familiar with could slow you down considerably. So again, this is a four and a half. This is my uh, my go-to plane for most of my smoothing. And uh, it's a Lee Nielsen. It's uh, maybe 15 or 20 years old. It's a, a cherry uh, cherry handles and tote. I can take it apart and show you. This is a lever cap. This is a lever cap. This is the uh, this is the uh, the iron, fairly thick at three sixteenths, if I'm not mistaken. And this is the cap iron. So this uh, one of the advantages to high end premium uh, hand planes is the is the thickness of the uh, the iron and the, uh, the cap iron. So that produces chatter and uh, all the side effects of having thinner blades. Another advantage to this particular premium plane is that it's a bedrock style so I can adjust the frog. The frog holds the uh, the uh, cap iron and the iron assembly and I can adjust it without removing all that. Like uh, I removed it now but uh, I, I could easily have adjusted or bring the, the frog forward or backward just from these three screws in the back here. A Bailey style on the other hand that I'll show you sh shortly you need to remove it. You need to take it all apart and the settings for the, uh, the frog are within the assembly so that's uh, it's a little more time consuming and uh, I'll just put this back together and this is the adjustment wheel so this uh, this wheel I'm not going to move it too much now but it it brings the uh, it uh, decreases or increases the depth of the blade and uh, this is the lateral adjustment lever right here and this will and I talk about this quite a bit in my woodworking course in my hand tool class about uh, and I really get the diagrams on how this works, but this will this will cock the uh, the blade over on the left or right, so you can do some skewed work or or take more off on one side or the other. So that's what I mean by becoming more familiar, having fewer hand tools, and becoming really familiar with them. It's probably more to your advantage than just going out and buying a bunch of. Uh, you know, the marketing people will tell you. To, purchase as many hand tools as you can of all sizes and orientations and styles, but that's really not, really, really not as important as. So again, the frog adjustment will advance the, uh, will advance the blade towards the, uh, the front. This is some wax I apply for gliding. And uh, so it advances the, uh, the iron towards the front of the mouth for, for tighter, smaller shavings or retracts it for rougher, coarser work. So that's how easy it is to adjust that here. And the depth, of course, is done with the adjusting wheel. That's the simplest uh, tool as possible for, uh, for, doing, for, for doing considerable amount of woodwork. I have to readjust that again. So, so I, use, uh, I use a four and a half for my, uh, for my smoothing and, uh, and work not preliminary processing reports. And then I'll show you a, uh, a number three I tend to pick up. This is a number three, but it's a Bailey style. So if you're adjusting the frog, I'll just take this apart. See, notice it's smaller than what I just showed you is a four and a half, which is a essentially a wide number four. Number three is uh, it's a beautiful plane. And uh, it's just, a, this is as small as I go because you can't really get a good grip on the number two or number one. The, whole, the way to hold it is to have your fingers around the handle and then keep one finger outside and then control it with the knob here in the front. 
for pressure, not too much pressure, but this is a Bailey style and the adjustment is, in a, is not in the back. It's, uh, and then uh, again, it's got the same, it's constructed the same way with a lever cap, with the uh, iron and cap iron. Now this particular uh, record number three has been updated, upgraded with a, uh, a thicker uh, hawk iron. You can buy these uh, through, Verita, through Lee Valley, they're replacement uh, irons. And uh, it comes at assembly with, as an assembly with the cap iron. And they're specific for different models of uh, early uh, Stanley and record planes. So again, it works the same way. The, uh, the adjustment wheel will, will advance or retract the, uh, the blade and the lateral adjustment talks it to one side or the other. And again, look at the frog here. The frog adjustment screws are within the frog. So you really need to remove, disassemble it to be able to advance and retract the frog. Now, having said that, I rarely ever move the frog because once it's set, you tend to dial my templates into very tight shavings. And I all I need to do is really advance or retract the, uh, the blade for thicker or thinner shavings. So I don't really play with the frog much, but having the bedrock style, the Lee Nielsen bedrock style and the Veritas also has, uh, has that style, is uh, it's an advantage over uh, Bailey style for that reason. And this, uh, again, if you, if you look at the, uh, the iron, it moves from left to right through my lateral adjustment. So you can do some fine fine adjustments doing it that way and eyeball in the, the clearance so it's uniform. Uh, eyeball the clearance and so it's uniform across the mouth through the lateral adjustment lever and the depth. So normally what I do is I retract the, retract the iron completely and begin hand planing and then slowly advance it to where it's taking shavings off so it doesn't bite into the wood too much at the beginning and I'll just show i give an example of that. An example board I'm going to use is this board. So it's important, uh, grain orientation is important when you're hand planing. So I always look uh, at the side of the, the board and I look for a rising grain. Now this is uh, this is white oak and okay, I think that's correct. And I'd like to talk about the, uh, the work holding system I've developed here. I use a face vise in conjunction with uh, with this accessory that slides along the face vise and locks in. And it's got a leather face, and I lock it into another uh, similar type thing that this one plugs in. It plugs in through a dog hole and then locks it to the side so it doesn't pivot. Now you don't necessarily have to use this. You can use a, uh, a wooden bench, a wood bench dog. And uh, do it that way, or maybe here. Depends on the length of the board. So you could use a bench dock, so let's just use a bench dock. So I'll try this. I haven't used this plane in a while, so I'll try some. Um, by the way, I'm, uh, I'm left handed, so. <laughs> I have different setups for, for tail vice. I have a tail, tail vice on this end. So if you're right-handed on this particular bench, which is built, it's symmetric on either side. You could use these, uh, these attachments I've developed, or you can use this attachment. Uh, because I'm left-handed, I tend to use, want to use this. But that, that's very fine. So I'll just advance it a little. These are very fine shavings. So. It's a little more substantial. I just advanced the, uh, I advanced the uh, wiring a little. So this is how I would. Uh, Finish the uh, surface of a piece of wood, or this could be a rail of a front rail of a of a cabinet stand, and uh, 
The other thing I tend to do is, uh, as I apply some uh, some wax to the uh, to the sole of the hand plane, I could use uh, paraffin wax, a stick of paraffin wax, and this lasts forever. I've got three or four of these on the go in my work benches, and I just wipe them across. But lately, I've been begun to use this Veritas tool wax, so I. Uh, They're both similar, but this is a little more fine. So I just apply this to, to the sole. And that not only protects the sole, but it, uh, it allows it to glide much smoother for a longer period of time. Uh, one of these tins will last, I'd say a number of years. So it's, uh, so I keep it handy on my workbench. And I'll just show you, this is probably gonna go flying now. So it really, really helps with uh, removing resistance, that, that tool wax. And so that's, uh, that's that point. I'll, I'll give you an example of uh, doing the edge of the board also. So if I were jointing the edge, I'd lock it in the same way similarly. This is probably yeah, that's a very fun setting. So when you uh, when you use hand planes, you'll find that uh, through the uh, just using it, you can advance or retract the. Uh, the adjustment wheel while you're hand playing there's between strokes so that's what i've been doing here i'm actually these are super fine shavings And that's, I, get, I guess you get the idea of uh, work holding 